Daniel Parker has just done his press conference ahead of the Cardiff City match, and he had some brutal things to say about Charlie Cresswell that could sort of throw his career into, into question at Leeds United. However, before we start, I was having a quick look at the numbers on the YouTube channel, and last video I showed you this, and the fact that a lot of you weren't subscribed, and in response, a lot of you were very, very kind and decided to subscribe, leading to this. It's so close. I just want to make it. Please subscribe. Anyway, on to what matters at hand. Uh, what Daniel Parker said, he said quite a lot. First up, he said he was aware of Charlie Cresswell's frustration at minutes, and this needs to be kept in mind. Charlie Cresswell is a young player, and the more he is playing, the more he will develop into a better footballer. That means that since he knows that Cresswell isn't getting the minutes that Cresswell wants, he has noticed Charlie Cresswell looking low or deflated at points, which you're going to around the training ground. You're not getting the football you want, and at the end of the day, that's going to add up to a little bit of frustration, and a worsening attitude is the nicest way I can put that. And it's led to Daniel Parker saying this, he won't be picked by me until he is mentally ready. Mentally ready can mean a lot of things. In this case, I think it means actually applying himself in training, because again, if you're low, if you're demotivated, you're not going to be performing at your best in training. And if you're not at your best in training, then there's a big question of, do you deserve to be in the first team? Plus, you have to look in front of him. He needs to fight for his place in the side. Joe Rodon is the other right centre-back. Joe Rodon has been one of the best right centre-backs in the Championship this season, so Charlie Crosswell needs to fight for his place, and to do that, he needs to be mentally ready. He needs to have the attitude of, I know I'm not going to be gifted a place, because everyone knew previously that he was promising, and maybe he got that in his head as well. Maybe he got in his head, like, I deserve to be playing football, but when your competition isn't, there's three centre-backs and I'm playing at Millwall, when it is there's two centre-backs and we've got Joe Rodon and Pascal Stroke in front of me, he needs to apply himself every single day in order to meet the standard. The ball is in his court, is what Daniel Farker said, and that is completely applicable here. Charlie Cresswell decides what his own mindset is. Charlie Cresswell decides how applied he is in training, how well that potential that he has turns into quality and turns into minutes and turns into... Basically, being one of the better centre-backs of his age group, which he can be if he applies himself. However, this entire thing makes me think there is a potential move on the horizon because Daniel Farker also said, if a club meets our expectations for a player with this potential, then they can leave. Now, there are a few ways that he could leave the squad. This could be on loan so he can develop elsewhere. But with this falling out with Daniel Farker, it's quite easy to see a world in which that doesn't necessarily happen. A world in which... Charlie Crosswell doesn't want to come back to Leeds United because he's not a big fan of Daniel Farker. And that would be a shame because Crosswell's got a lot of potential. He's just not meeting it at the moment. However, this also sort of interests me in that the club isn't just going to take any offer. They're not going to say, OK, we'll just give him away. He's a gift to you, Millwall, because you've had him in the past and he enjoyed it there. He understands that Leeds United need to stand up for themselves in this transfer market, even if a player is pushing for a move, because that's what we learned from last summer. If we don't need to release a player, why would we release a player? And I think if Charlie Cresswell requests a move and someone comes in with a permanent bid of enough money for what his ceiling can be, then it makes sense to accept it. But until then, probably not. Maybe at best alone. He has also said that Cresswell won't be in the Cardiff squad, which makes complete sense to me because after having this conversation with the media, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Cresswell and it would be very hard for him to come off the bench. So ultimately, what does this mean? Having a look between the lines, for me, it means that Daniel Farker is not one for handing out opportunities. If he was, Nonto would have played a hell of a lot more football. If he was, Jaden Anthony would have played a lot more football. Jed Spence would have just been in the first team all year long, apart from when he was injured. He's looking at quality. He's looking at standard of player. He's looking at how people apply themselves mentally in a football match because at the end of the day, the mental game will win you a game of football. This also says to me that there's a likely Crosswell move away in this window. For a young player like that, he's sure to be headstrong and it's going to be hard to see if he changes his attitude. This is the big inflection point. If there is a big change in attitude, sure, he can come back into this. Eventually, he might be able to make himself a... First team player. Never know. Could happen. But ultimately, I think this entire saga symbolises what really matters at Leeds United, and that is side over self every time. Farker is putting the team first. 
rather than Charlie Cresswell's individual wants. And I think that is a fundamental part of what it takes to be a Leeds United manager. Anyway, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe. I will see you later.